tourists have gone. It is November, and this island in the Scottish Hebrides is shut. Except, that is, to a group of men brought here to learn how not to die. Phase two of the many phases of the making of a mountain and Arctic warfare Royal Marine is governed by a single word, survival. The euphoria of initiation to an elite special forces unit is over. Suddenly, the instructors are remote and laconic. Illogical requests, staring at a blank wall for hours, demand blind obedience and induce a mood of apprehension. Their transport roars homewards to the mainland, leaving them to learn to live by wits alone. But for how long? Ten days? Ten weeks? No one will tell them. Appreciation of pastoral beauty is hardly a priority. Geese in flight are quantified only by the calorific value of their slowest member. This brutalising process began some days earlier in a Plymouth classroom. So what we're going to go on to now are the different types of reptiles and insects that are edible, that may save your life or your companion's life when you're out in a survival situation. What we have then on the reptile side are lizards, snakes, frogs, that sort of thing, and they are all edible. OK, what we've got coming up for you now is a worm omelette. As Europeans, we're not used to eating insects, and people have died or got very seriously injured or in a bad situation because they haven't eaten things that have been around them. Ophiophobes and others of sensitive disposition are advised to leave the room. This is not a pretty sequence. The novelists who glamorise undercover fighting fail to mention episodes like this. Whenever you're eating insects or have to eat, you're in a situation where you have to eat insects, never eat in insects that are dead or uh, are suffering through disease or ill, obviously. <laughs> They're walking around <laughs> with crutches on, then don't eat them. What we have here are worms. If you haven't got anything to eat with it, they can just be eaten as they are raw. <laughs> and they are highly nutritious. All right, not much in calories, but as you will see, they're not that bad. If you all pass that round, make sure everyone gets a good taste. <laughs> Right. Everyone have a good old uh, chomp in them. But if some of you don't like the egg, you can leave it. It's a bit like eating spaghetti. In the Hebrides, they come face to face with a chilling reality. It is called the dislocation of expectation, a ponderous definition which means precisely that. forward and sit down. Observed dispassionately by the resident monarch of the Glen, they move off for lesson one of their survival course. It starts where Baden-Powell left off. They can't see out. They don't know where they're going. They know it will not be comfortable. They also know that having chosen to fight behind enemy lines, their lives may depend on what they assimilate here. Your wire snare. Most of yours will be like that when you get them out of your pockets. Smooth it out, stand on the cord, pull it tight on your finger, and just run a little stick up and down. Because you want this to run smoothly right around whatever's neck goes in it. Have a, a short stick, just split the end, and you all see that? Place it 
and just flick that in. Make a nice pear shape. You don't want it too high or you'll push it out the way that way. And you don't want it too low or you'll just flatten it. You're not trying to snare them by the leg, you want them by the neck. So just turn it so it's about there, about a fist height off the ground. Now the duck down there, in, pull, and you've got him. A little bit of natural history for you. Can you see how all the rushes there are, are blown with the wind? Now the rabbits during the day, if it's been raining, or if it's a nice sunny day like this, an unusual day, come out and lie and dry off in the sun. So this is where your big stick comes in handy. If you keep downwind, because they'll be on the leeward side, keep downwind and you spot one. Don't look at them, don't try and stare them out. Just walk up, keep walking, go at a tangent to them, and when you spot them, whack them on the head. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow on behind, lad. The next thing you're going to come across is probably the ferret. And that is what everyone thinks when they think of a ferret. Now, ferrets are descendants of polecats. And so when you cross those two, you get one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the three variations. They're all ferrets. Who wants to try it? The meat's good. It's, it's quite strong, but it's, it's good. Oat cuisine, it conspicuously is not. But yes, you can eat ferret. Indeed, facing death, it appears, you can eat damn nearly anything. <laughs> Take the way up there. Not much to get a hold of a jack. And just peel it away. So that's all good food. And there he is. Take that away. Clean him up around the edges. Live and ready, Jack. Though. The prospective menu does not get better. Eventually, they arrive at rats. Here he is, Rattus Norwegicus. <laughs> Our brown rat. Uh, what to say about this fellow? Fifty-five percent of rats carry leptospirosis. Rats catches yellows, wheels disease, the other names of it. It's a, a Jones type disease. So be careful if you try and catch one alive, don't. If you've got one in a trap that's still alive, kill it first before you touch the trap. Be careful about your hands, don't fiddle on them, put your hands in your mouth. If you're going to eat them, take the guts out of them and Ditch them. Don't keep the liver. Don't keep any of the innards. Use the meat if you want. On my course, I have two. So I'm still here. Skin it just the same as a rabbit. But don't use the innards. Anybody want to try? No, no one wants to try. But then, no one yet is actually starving. But what by now is going through their minds? What the hell's going to happen next? I mean, there's, there's a lad on the course who has been here before, so he has told them, I suppose in his words, how everyone was running his course. And they will all have an inkling of it. But I think until you actually do something like this, and you're actually faced with the prospect of going out there and having to fend for yourself, not having the, the comforts that we've become accustomed to, then the reality will hit home. How hard is it? As hard as you want to make it yourself. Shrewdly, one man grabs the carcass of the ferret. But uppermost in all their minds, as they're hustled round the back of a deserted outhouse, is a deep uneasiness about where this game is going next. About turn. Move to up against the wall. Move till your faces are up against the wall. Come on, move right up, lads. Move right up. Move right up. Push up. Okay, you stay there. Right, sit down. Go 
cross leg. Of each of the piles of clothing. Facing me. Take all your clothes off except for your next in front of you. You will place your shirt, one pair of socks, and a pair of boots. The remainder of your kit you'll place behind you. Also, what you want to place in front of you is your survival kit that you want to take with you. While you're doing that, I'll read you the rules and limitations of the exercise. These set of instructions will go with you anyway. The limits of the exercise are as laid down in reference B, which is a map. All buildings are strictly out of bounds. Do not tear up fence posts. Do not remove polythene sheeting from silo pits. Do not raid private gardens. Don't let me catch you talking to the locals unless someone is dying or in need of an emergency. If you jeopardise the exercise for me, I will jeopardise you. You will keep your watch. We you keep your watch, Doctor Johnson. Yep. What does happen next spells out how life will be from now on in no uncertain manner. Stripped to their wife fronts, their earthly possessions from this moment may comprise only what fits into a small tobacco tin: one fishing line, fish hooks, matches, one razor blade, one jackknife. Check the, kit. Check the, kit. the search procedure would do justice to the Gestapo, but to outwit them, if you can, is seen as initiative and thus fair game. The intelligent contraband is a wire saw, salt tablets and obviously money. They're permitted to keep a billy can to drink from and their own boots, but knives, forks and spoons are not allowed. Well, that's movie fingers. Don't bother doing Put your, your boots, boots on. on. Try and get a move on. They're thrown battle dress and greatcoats, all as supple as asbestos, left over from World War II. It's not trooping the colour. Sleeping bags and ground sheets, any waterproof items, are prohibited. Hey, pick up your kit on the back of the wagon. Get out there. Get out there. You can leave this straw. Right, sit down facing the front of the wagon, cross legged, and don't talk. Right, neck is off, bend over. Down. Okay. Has been known before. Okay, check this kit. No group is to be within 500 metres of any building. No contact is to be made with the local population or other groups. Smuggling money to buy a survival is the obvious temptation, but it rarely works. You must have that wrist change on your fingers, sir. Uh, Oh, now look what we found here, sir. Is this for us to go show tonight, is it? A modest banknote is found in the hasp of a jackknife. Pretty you can, lads. Get all your kit together. Can't buy much of this arm for a pound. Good note. try. Good try. Where was it? And it's in the jackknife. Inside the jackknife. I wonder what else he's got. Have you got a look at his boots. Mr. Smith knows all these things, you know. 
How much has he swallowed then, sir? Mr. Smith has reason to. He's an officer, was previously with the SBS, and has been this way before. Well, you can check, check the battle dress, Mr. Smith, as you'd read. Cut off with the head, Nothing is overlooked. Even finger dressings are prized open. Cheers. You guys will take the whole finger off, Doc. You won't have to dress it now. Well, let's work together. How do you do it? Really nice. Hey, say, so on you are, on the back of the wagon. Just pick your kit and go. Go on. Come on, then, get out there. There are just three hours of daylight left when they're bundled back into the trucks. Six three-man teams are to be jettisoned in six different locations on the island, all bleakly inhospitable. Can you get your map out? Okay. That's where you are. I'll see you on Sunday. Okay. Well, incidentally, just before you go, they were not. Did you manage to get anything through? Yeah. <laughs> but what did you get? I mean, tell us. I've, got a, I've got a wire saw in my boot. <laughs> same. Same. You got the wire, same. I got the wire saw. The, the fiber was just a decoy. <laughs> yeah, knew they fall for it. <laughs> Good luck. Right. Okay, thanks. See you. Thank you very much. Right, boys. This We've is in the middle of nowhere. Got three, <laughs> three locks. Where else are you, uh, are you headed for just now? Right. Well, they they dropped us off about midway down this wood. What we're going to do is cut down, carry on down the road, come up to this, this house so you know exactly which, uh, where we are. Now you want to try to get to the, uh, to the lock. They've been given maps of unique obscurity. They bear no place names, and such buildings as they show are all out of bounds. There's a boundary line within which, for the next ten days, they must live completely off the land. The immediate essential is a bivouac, reinforced by such priceless jewels as a sheet of rusting corrugated iron rescued from a river bed. Scavenging plastic and metal artefacts, anything which is wind or waterproof becomes a preoccupation. O six thirty next day. This group have been rather luckier than some. They have a breakfast, although admittedly the menu is rather limited. Stoat, grilled, baked, or fried. Okay. Chris, your first trial. Oh, yeah. yeah, we called it this morning. It was dead when we caught it. But last night we found a trap when we first got here. It was just over there in a pipe. So we took that out and set it. And it was sprung early on when I checked it in the night. So I reset it again. When we went this morning, we had this fellow in it. A stoat. Not a lot of meat on him, though. <laughs> but I thought, I'm sure he'll make a stew. <laughs> All over the island, small pockets of Royal Marines are awakening to the reality that room service has been suspended. <clears throat> hours of light so we decided we'd find enough material to keep ourselves dry for the night we got some plastic sheets and a load of fern to keep ourselves warm and then we put out as many snares as we could we managed to get out seven each and this morning we got a rabbit and a hare it would seem that this group are doing rather well but they have unscheduled visitors with more critical ideas What you haven't done is considered one iota the tactical situation of where you just put this building. Not one iota. And for yourself, have done the course that I know you've done. It's not good enough, is it, really? 
So what we want you to do by the next time we come, sir, is to lift and shift that, and let's have it uh, be a bit more tactics considered. Shelter, tactical situation. Warmth, food. Sigs, security. Come call of it. We can see your smoke coming through. You know, it's, it's, it's dispersing a little bit, but probably would do even more if it's in the open. Um, you can find a much better position than just clunking in the nearest wood. Yeah? yeah. Right. OK. Disappointed, then? Well, obviously, uh, we've got the shelter up and it's raining now, so uh, to move is a bit of a blow, but such is life, you know. Just have to move at the value. I don't think we appreciated, you know, uh, OK, I know it's a tactical uh, setting, but I think we just took it for granted it was just for part of the exercise. Um, so, I'm, you know, it's no problem, just a move. How about you? Take it as it comes. Easy, you know. I mean, you're going to expect these sort of things. Yeah, you expect these sort of things to happen. Mm -hmm. So, we'll move. Make the best of it. Lieutenant Smith took such umbrage from the reprimand that neither he nor his men were seen again until the exercise was over. The line between enterprise and mutiny can be very thin. The hills are alive with prying instructors. The spot checks are not for the men's protection. They're to keep them apprehensive and on the hop. <coughs> Lieutenant Hutton is proud of his catch. You've got it here, Chris. Did you? Yeah. Which one was that? We were in the rain on that fence. But McLean is a hard man to impress. Great. Everybody's going to find somewhere to look. The first thing they're going to sight, search is natural objects, woods, derelicts. Mm -hmm. But then, truly, anybody. I know you're going to have to survive, yeah. But anyway, you, you had it, wouldn't your fire fire would give you a little? Oh, yeah. Well, not necessarily. I can really change it from. No relation to Katie Ball. Right, you're going. Right. 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 Yeah. You get a couple right. of those and that'll do. Yeah. You'd find out another thing that the, the farmers around here put packs out for the cows, treat it very well. And they actually put their, their rotten veg and stuff in the fields. Not a tip. Just go where the cows are on you. As soon as they put it down, you can actually beat the cattle to it. Stealing rotting fodder from innocent cattle may not seem cricket, but it's a handy tip. It's handy too when you stumble across man-made shelter from a bygone age, now the temporary residence of Russ Craig. Russ, how are you getting on? Not too bad. Um, I haven't caught anything yet, which is a bit unfortunate. Got plenty of veg though. We're starting to get a bit fed up with that. We can do with some, some meat or fish. The other two lads are out now. Uh, one's gone over into the other area, which we're not supposed to go into. There's two reservoirs there. And we were talking to the lads yesterday up there, also of which we're not supposed to talk to. But they've caught a load of fish in that, so we've got some night lines out. Hopefully it'll bring some fish back. And yeah, and these out at the moment, putting some more snows out, changing them. Because we've had a lot of the snows down that area, all around there. They haven't been too successful, so we've moved them up to the top near the road, try out there. Tell me about the bits and pieces you've managed to forage. Well, just up there there's um, a farm, and apparently a couple of days before we come on the island they moved out. So they've ditched all the rubbish. Um, I think the best thing we've got is this quality street tin. It turns out to be a cooking pot. Um, we get loads in there. Another good thing we found was um, a lot of old kiddies' clothes and what have you. Might not look much to you and I, but uh, 
We've got a Spurs trousers, spur jacket, all sorts of bits and pieces. It looks like rubbish to everybody else, but uh, at night time what we do with that is take our boots off, wrap our feet in it, and use the rest as pillars. Um, boss also made a hat out of a bit of it. There's all sorts here, there's even a bra there. You get that way inclined. Socks and nuts another good thing. I've worn these once because mine got wet yesterday. Mung stick stacks of paper and what have you for lighting fires. It's all good kit. Deprivation transforms them into something close to kleptomaniacs, even down to accumulating weapons of suspect firepower. Got a gun to go hunting with, but I uh, haven't got much ammunition for it, unfortunately. And here we've just got a load of plastic things, bottles. Even got some plates if you can catch them at decent. Eat it off. And then for electric razor for when they come out of the field. And that's about it. We give some stuff away yesterday. Did your mutton come round? Well, we swapped him for some veg, actually. Took pity on us, because they've got stacks in their area, apparently. Um, unknown to anybody else, we've also got a push bike. And tonight, whew, I'm going down there. Down there is a familiar landmark, Mary Logan's farm. There are strict rules against touting aid from local residents. Is that Mary Logan's, is it? That is Mary Logan. I won't be rid of that anyway. Because that's one uh, I gave a record on the other day. All I did was just walk straight down the road to within about 300 metres. Got a world's allocation of dogs, so it'd be stupid to try anything anyway. But further down, uh, I don't know, six, seven k away, there's quite a lot of farmhouses. I take a bimble down there. The locals equally are warned, particularly Mary Logan, a lady of kindly disposition. Hello, Mary. Hello. Long time since I've seen yes, you. Yes. Well, we we'll just come round to, to um, let you know again about the, the lads coming round, and yeah. if you do see them, for you not to give them all your cups of tea and, and sandwiches sure. and stuff like that, you know. And I've seen the twins down the road there. Did you? Mm. That's good. Mm. So you've not seen any of the lads at all? No, none at all. <laughs> none? No, none no. at all. They've not been in your barn and, and asked you for some straw no. and stuff like that, no? Uh, if, they take, if they take anything from you, Mary, would you tell us when the end of the exercise yes. is over so that we can replace it? Yes. Well, she lost a couple of ducks last time. Yeah. Yeah. How many ducks you lost a few years ago? What, 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 will you, what will you tell them? If any, if any of them should happen to knock on your door and ask for a cup of tea, what will you tell them? They will not give them anything. Good girl. We'll be coming round during, during, the, uh, during the week. We'll probably pop in and see you. Yes. And see the boys. Okay. Right, see you long then, Mary. See you. Bye bye, love. Bye. bye. Well, Mary Logan's one of the people that doesn't take a blind bit of notice of what we say. Um, she treats it very much as, a, as if she's an agent of some kind, uh, and um, it's a big game for them. Um, it's a, it's a a nice bright aspect for their normal um, from their normal run of the day lives, and they they look for it with enthusiasm every year when we come down. And, and she doesn't take a blind bit of notice, and she will actually um, take people in. I mean, she, she'd keep them in there for the whole time if she could. Uh, but obviously, if, um, from past experience now, it's getting harder for her to do it um, because we watch her very closely. Well, you did the course yourself. Um, would you ever dream of going into somewhere like Mary Logan's? Definitely not. No, I was approached by Mary on several occasions, um, but refused any sandwiches or anything like that that she offered. Day two of the 10-day ordeal. Time for the commanding officer to arrive with one of those just-what-you-need requests. I'd like to see a spoon from each of you next time I come round. OK. That's not a metallic spoon. Uh, That's a wooden spoon. <laughs> Made, designed, fashioned. He found a set in his pocket, that was it. found a set in his pocket. OK, this. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see a wooden spoon carved by each of you, all right? One project. You've got the old sunken eyes, haven't you, Corporal Dale? You've looked pathetic already. It's only day two. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait till Friday. <laughs> oh, we've all made a spoon each. No fork. Jan's is a good one. Just got one. Made a proper fork, then. That was after Captain Lear come round, you know. We'd, we'd only been here almost three days. We've been running around like blue-ass flies, searching the area, trying to get some food. 
and all your league could go on about was why we haven't we made a wooden spoon. I oh, thought it was quite incredible. You know, come on a survival situation to make a wooden spoon. That was all he was interested in. Why haven't you got a wooden spoon? Well, we've got them now. A soliloquy on the nature of the spoon. Apparel fashioned from a fertilizer bag. It's a far cry from the tunes of glory of the Royal Tournament or the glittering promises of the recruiting posters. If any of these guys are caught in a house on this trip, what is going to happen to them? They'll go back to Plymouth and back to their units. They know that they're not allowed to use houses. If they're caught, they're caught and that's it. They will go back. And other infringements of the rules? Other infringements of the rules, if I find them eating cheese sandwiches or packets of salt, packets of cornflakes, caviar or whatever else, you know, they will, uh, I will find, I'll have a suitable punishment for them. But if I find them in a house, drinking cups of tea and keeping nice and warm by the Rayburn cooker, they will go back. Hey, boys. There are heavy penalties, too, for teams fraternising with one another. Yet, chance meetings on lonely roads do happen. And the thing about what you were saying about how easy are they getting it, we don't want it too hard. It's going to be no good whatsoever. All we're going to have then is, is 17 zombies. Um, zombies. Um, but anybody can produce that. You know, but they, um, as I say, the big thing is they learn and, and learn things and learn how to and um, what it's going to be like, and just think what it would be like if they never had all this polythene and, and corrugated stuff, uh, which they will do later on in Norway anyway. It is a luxury, really, for polythene. It is, it and is. We, we'll let them use it because they, if they, if you do scavenge and you're on the trot, you'll use it. I mean, you will at night. Is, is, yourself, is, isn't it? is go to people's places without that. Um, you're not going to survive very long at all. I mean, you can imagine how long a person um, would be able to stay out on a night on here without any of that, that protection at all, even if he had a certain amount of clothes. I think a couple of days and it would be an exposure case and the day after they'd be dead. Well, no one has died yet, but there are seven days to go. We shall rejoin them next week in the islands that are not always what Mendelssohn and Samuel Johnson cracked them up to be.